Hey everybody, welcome to episode 17 of my Musical Moments series. Today coming to you from Sequoia National Park where we're shooting some digital content for the Sequoia Symphony. More coming on that very soon, incredibly soon, this week in fact, finally, so we're excited about that. In the meantime, take a look at this week's episode, which is a short, jam-packed third installment of my series within a series. Bruce's Two Minute Primer on Musical Form, where today we talk about the dance movement of the symphony, the minuet. If you have not done so already, there is a like button below. Please click it. If you have not done so already, there is a subscribe button below. Please click that and enjoy this episode. What is a minuet anyway? Welcome to Bruce's Two Minute Primer on Musical Form, Episode 3. What is a minuet? A minuet is a musical form most usually found as the third movement of a symphony. Although known by this shortened form, the full title is Minuet and Trio, which gives you a hint about the two-part characteristics of this form. Minuets are slow, stately dances in three, like a waltz, but with a lot of starch. It's easy to think of them as being danced by aristocratic ladies in corsets and men in powdered wigs. The roots of the minuet are indeed in the dance movements of the early suites from the Baroque period. The minuet also takes a lot of influence from opera, where Handel and other Baroque opera composers wrote a great solo tune for a character called an aria. They'd follow that with a contrasting second section. Because the opera wasn't four hours long yet, though, they thought, wouldn't it be great to go back and repeat that whole first part? They were sometimes right. But this became known as the da capo aria, because composers wouldn't bother to write out the music for that repeat of the opening section, instead just writing the words da capo at the end of the second contrasting section, which tells the performers, you're not done yet. Go back to the beginning and do that whole first part again. In symphonies, minuets do the same thing, starting with a memorable, slow, and stately tune, usually focusing on the string section. There would often be two short phrases, each of which are repeated. But then we get to the second contrasting theme, which in symphonies are called trios, and often switch the focus to the winds of the orchestra. The winds have their moment in the sun, and then we repeat that whole opening section. Mercifully, because we all have places to be, we usually skip the repeats when we go back. The biggest thing to happen to the minuet in history was this guy. I know, again, really? But yes. He liked the minuet enough as a form, but thought it might be more interesting if it was played a lot faster. When he did this, he kind of invented something we now call a scherzo, Italian for joke, because it's a joke how few right notes the string players actually play during a performance of a scherzo. After this, though, other composers thought Beethoven was onto something, and most of them pretty much imitated him and replaced the stately minuet with the faster and much more fun scherzo. It was still in three, and had a trio as expected. Beethoven also liked to play with repeating the trio section over and over, so often he'd do minuet, trio, minuet, trio, minuet, a five-part form. And even once, in his seventh symphony, he flirts with the idea of repeating the trio a third time. Seven parts? But he knew that people had to get home in time for the 11 o'clock news, so he reconsiders, suddenly drops the idea entirely, and races onto the finale. And that is the general form of the minuet. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already.